uh, the men that missed it. I know they did. But I'm sure they felt it going all the way out, you know, because the word of God spreads. You know what I'm saying? God's word is contagious. And so, therefore, we know they got some of it. So you all have to wait till you get home and your wife will tell you the rest. But right now, we just want to thank and praise the Lord for being here today. We know that all the accolades have been laid and everything, the foundation, everything. And now, I'm moving it on out. Amen? Okay, thanks. So, um, I don't want to prolong the service any, but when Michelle asked me to do this, I said, Michelle? I say, are you sure? And she said, yes. <laughs> so I said, now I've been knowing Michelle for quite some time. As you know, she's women after God's own heart. You know, she's right there. I tell her to do that. Okay, I got it, Pastor. I got it. And we don't have to worry about anything because she got it. And that's, that's great. That's great when, you know, when all you have to do is ask somebody to do something. And they say, okay, I got it. And you don't have to be concerned about that anymore. So I just thank God for her and for this church. I just thank God for everybody that's in here. I love, love, love to be connected with godly folks. I love that. I love it. I love it. I do. Because God is good. And he said for us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves among the saints, you know. And you can tell a saint, believe me. You can. If you can't feel the love coming from them, then they need to go back to the altar and ask God to forgive them and tell them they got it wrong so they come back to get another portion of it. You know, you got to learn in a way because you just, because you got saved today, don't mean you know everything. It's a process. It's a process. But I guarantee you, the more you do it, the more you learn, the better at it you'll get. You will. And you will learn to let your love explode. It'll just come running. Don't you know love speaks? Without you even opening up your mouth, it speaks. speaks and your faith talks and it walks yes it does yes it does so you ought to just want to pass that on amen glory be to God now I asked Michelle what did she want me to do she said just do whatever just do what you do I said uh, okay you know, young people don't care how they talk to people my age, you know. <laughs> so um, <laughs> she said, just, just do what you do, Pastor Reed. I said, okay. I said, I think I can do that. So I just love, I just love that. And as I talk, I'm sure you would know that um, I love to have fun. I love to have fun because, uh, you know, God has a sense of humor. He don't want us to be walking around here like we don't have no God at all. He don't want us to do that. Why? Because God is love. And he has a sense of humor. You can tell he has one because look at us. <laughs> Just look at us. And you can tell that he does have it. We mess up a lot of times. God say, all I see is the blood. They'll get themselves together. <laughs> God is good. So I, I just want to go ahead on and um, do this pilot scripture that uh, Michelle gave me. Is that all right? And uh, when Michelle was talking and, and she was saying that uh, when I got the flyer, it's his brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind 
and reaching forth unto those things which are before. For I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Didn't you feel something? Did you not feel Paul's heart? So I'm going to tell you what Paul wanted to pass on. Amen. And how we need to get connected with him. And he's worth that. Anybody can write that much um, in the Bible, three quarters of the, uh, three fourths of the New Testament. We can follow him. So I want you to know that Paul is a man, once he got saved, <laughs> was mighty. He was not afraid, he was bold, he was courageous, and he said he wanted to pass this on. He didn't care about what was going on in the world. All he knew is that there was a God to serve and that he was not going anyplace else but to be with him. Huh? That's where he was going, to be with him. He was passing that information. The whole Bible is for us to follow. So it was passed on to us. This Bible was passed on to us that we may be able to follow, to grasp, and not do our own thing, but do the thing that God had given us to do. Say the thing God say for us to say. Walk the way God say for us to walk. Talk the way God say for us to talk. Pass it on. Be in love with the Lord. Uh, you just don't like the Lord. You love him. And in love with him. Now pass that on. Pass it on. Ah. Ah, get me started. Mm, 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 mm. He said, I press. I press. He was diligently seeking. Are you seeking the Lord? The way Paul was. Mm? He didn't care. He didn't say anything fancy. Huh? But he said, I'm pressing toward the mark. That means he was strenuously pressing. Pressing. He didn't want to lose it. He didn't want to miss it. He wanted to go just where Jesus was. Where do you want to go? It's not about how articulate we are. It's not about that. It's not about our fancy cars, clothes, or houses. And not about the money in the bank. But it's about your faithfulness in the Lord. Your faithfulness in him. God is good, y'all. And I love him. I love him. And if there's anything that anybody can say about me, is that I'm pressing, I'm pressing toward the mark, huh? I am pressing. Let that be your testimony. Doesn't matter what they say. They could say you're holy roly, that doesn't matter. They can't do anything for you. Only God can. It doesn't matter. Are you quiet when you go into the grocery store and a sister come up, she need prayer? Okay, but you want to take her around the corner where nobody is so you can pray for her? You be flat-footed and bold and talk, pray loud so everybody in the store can hear you praying for her. Don't be quiet. That's not, uh-uh. How are you going to win others? Because... Who knows, later on that same person may look you up for you to pray for them because they heard you praying for somebody else and they felt it. 
They felt it because they felt that you knew what you were saying. And that you were not praying to no fictitious God. But you were talk, praying to a God that was alive and well. I'll yeah. ah, pass it on. Let them know that you are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus. You're not ashamed, but you're bold in it. You're bold. Mmm. Mmm. God is good. God is so good. Paul, what he was saying, he was saying that uh, in that 13 and 14th uh, verse, he says that... Uh, don't look back at your past successes or your failures. Don't look back. He say, don't even look back at others to see what they're saying about you. Because when you are concerned about what other people are saying about you, then you invite defeat. You invite that. When you are so concerned about what somebody else is saying, your mind is not stayed on Jesus Christ. It's not stayed on him. Keep your eyes focused on the prize. Focus. Look straight ahead. I'll say, mm -mm. He said, because all he had, he counted as done. But what he has now is worth having. What he has now. And he had, yeah, he, he was blessed with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Old Testament. But when Jesus came on the scene, he realized that was nothing. But what he had gained from on the Damascus Road was all he needed. He gained that, and everything else that he had was done. Wow. 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 It's all I can say is wow. wow. <laughs> and when he said that I pressed toward the mark, uh, and then I want to bring the basketball in, you know, because... Michelle sent me this flyer with a basketball and a hoop on there, right? Basketball on there? Okay. So well, I'm going to tell you what I think about the basketball players. I call them runners. The basketball players are runners. Mm -hmm. And uh, But before they get started, they have to send a center from each one of the teams along with the referee in the center of the court, he throw it up and each one jump to try to hit the ball to his teammate. Am I right? Am I right? And the one that get the ball, that's the court that go in. They start playing, they start running. And, uh, and from then on, what they're concerned about is getting that ball in the goal. That's what they're concerned about, getting it in the goal. And they are steady running. They're steady running. But let me tell you something. Can't you see the adrenaline running all in them, the muscles fle uh, fleecing, you know, flexing and all of that? They're running up and down that coat. They're going to win this game. Yeah. I don't know if it's your team or my team or whose team it is, but one team is going to win and one is going to lose. They are so excited. The players are excited. The people in the, in the uh, stadium are excited. They are excited. And you can just feel the excitement. Feel it. All in there. I know some of your children play that ball and you jumping off out the bleachers. Come on, get that ball. Don't let that ball take, that boy take that ball from you. That's the way you be hollering and screaming. Inside, <laughs> inside the stadium. And, and you're a Christian too. <laughs> but that's the, way you, that's the way we do. 
All the excitement. But what about the excitement that Christian has? You should have that same kind of excitement when you're on the team of God. That very same kind of excitement. Once you get saved, you need to be running out of here. Telling everybody, I've been born again. What about that excitement? I'd rather be on God's team than to be on any other team. Let that excitement. Ah, Christians are just like that runners. We are running too. We are running this race. We are going to run this race. And guess what? We're going to win. You don't have to wait until the ball game is over. You can shout now. Why? Because the battle has already been won. <laughs> oh, my God, my God, my God. Yeah, this game's already over. We're just walking it out. That's all we're doing. Just walking it out. That's it. It's already been done. Christ Jesus did it for us. He did it. He told, Paul, he told his disciples, look, I'm going away. But I want you to take this gospel. Take it. And spread it throughout the whole world. Didn't he pass that on to us? What are we supposed to do? Pass it on. With diligence. Pass it on. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Oh, I love him. 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 One thing about it, nobody can take the love of God away from me. And they better not even try. Mm -mm -mm. We need to be in hot pursuit. Yes, hot pursuit. Mm. You know, it only takes a spark to start a fire. And we run out of here tonight talking about the love of God and what we've learned in here today, that's a spark. But when we do that and the crowd gathers around, then everybody in that crowd will feel the heat. They will know if you are sincere or if you're not. Your life living is the one that speaks for you. Not so much as what you say is how you live. Ah, oh, God is good. And he will. He will direct your path. If you would allow him to. You know we can. We can allow God to direct our paths because he said, that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Let that fire rise up within you. Let it rise. Let it. Let it rise. Run. You're running a race. You're a runner because you want to take everybody with you persuade them to come along with you because you know what the end's going to be
Don't let them go to that other place. But take them along with you. So that see another going to come and water. And before you know it, they may get there before you. Regardless to what kind of lifestyle they have now. But if you sow that seed, then I might come and water it. Mm -hmm. See all the seeds that have been sown in here before I got up? All right, I'm watering it now. <laughs> God knows how to do it. Yeah, yeah, he knows how to do it. And he never fails. Mm. It only takes that spark. Do you still have that spark inside of you? You should. You're born again. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. He has not gone anywhere. Let him rise up big within you. And when he does that, don't worry, we can see it. We can see it. Without you even opening up your mouth, we can see. Now. So what do we do? Are we going to sit down on it? Or are we going to pass it on? Pass it on, right? That's what our father told us to do. He said, go preach and teach throughout the world. Let them know that I'm God and that I love you. Let them know that I came and I died for them. All the stripes was, that was laid upon my back. Every hair that was plucked out of my beard and plucked out of my, off my head. I did that for them. So you got to pass that on. Because then they'll know just how much I love them. Teach them how to love me. That's what every Christian job is, to teach others how to love God. How to love him. How to love him. So I advise you to put on your faith Yes, I say put it on, just like you put on your helmet of salvation. <laughs> put it on and keep running the race because you're a winner. You are a winner. You are a winner. You cannot lose. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say, I can't lose with the stuff I use. <laughs> so, so, so I want you all to know this. You can't lose. We cannot lose if we stay with Christ. You don't have to wonder about your salvation. You don't have to wonder about that. If you are in Christ Jesus. And don't let anybody come and tell you that you do. Because you don't. You know that 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 you have been born again. And the comforter that Jesus said he was going to send has already come. So you got to know this. How can you be bold if you don't know it? If you're wondering. You don't have to wonder about that. When you are born again, the spirit of God dwells within. And therefore we can go out boldly confessing that the Lord lives. How do you know he lives? Because he lives in me. Well, you still don't know. I know because he said so. He said, I, I must go, but I'm going to send you another comforter. 
And he will be with you as well as in you. Huh? Yeah. Glory be to God. I guess you say, what kind of pastor that is? I give the first scripture. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. I'm just so excited. <clears throat> I'm just running through what I already know. Glory be to God. Oh, give God a hand clap. Woo! Woo! I just love him. And I just go on and on and on and on. Paul and them didn't have nothing. They didn't have nothing to go by. But he loved Jesus. He was given the word. And he shared the word. So we are blessed. We are really, really blessed. Ah. Ah. Thank you, God. Mmm. Mmm. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. I know that once you have experienced it, the love of God, that you want to spread it. You want to tell it. Because there's something about that fire. You can't keep it to yourself. Once you're born again, it's just like everything is brand new. When I got saved, I, 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 everything, my eyes seemed like it was just open, open, open. Everything was so bright. Bright, I mean bright. And I said, I say, well now, what's going on? But everything looked different to me. I mean everything. And I, and I will tell you this little short story. Before I got saved, I used to watch the televangelists, and uh, they would be on there, and the elderly people, they'd go on them elderly people, they, they'd stand up, they can hardly get up, but they would stand up so they can get prayed for. And this televangelist, he would go, he would be preaching that, and then he'll do like this, and they fall on the floor, right? So I say, I said to myself before I knew anything, I said, now you know, why is he pushing that lady down? <laughs> I said, now that's crazy. I mean, you, you gotta be ashamed of yourself. I mean, come on now. The lady could barely walk. <laughs> now, this was before I got saved now. But when, <laughs> when, um, it probably, it wasn't, you know, God is something. Oh, I mean, you know, he is really something. You know, he's all in your business. He is. He is all in your business. When, when I went to this, this theater, the lady uh, evangelist was there preaching and, and teaching. So I went, and she came to, I was in the dark, sitting down. I didn't want to go. But my girlfriend, I promised her that I would go to church with her. So I was sitting in the corner. <laughs> and since I was sitting in the corner, nobody could reach me there. But the evangelist came and threw the aisle and said, God said, come here. He's ready for you now. And I just had some beers the night before. So you know how that is. You know, the truth has set you free. So when I did that, I, um, I said, I got up. And I said, me? She said, yes, you. Come on, don't be scared. I went, and before I got to the corner of the aisle, she started praying. And when I went in the aisle, she said, she didn't even touch me. And I was on the floor. <laughs> God just showed me right then and there what happened. That the power of God don't have to push nobody, use no hands to push anybody down. But his presence is the one that does that. Hmm? Who can stand before a mighty God. Who can do that? Ah, oh, we're in hot pursuit now.
Generations after generations, we are always passing down stuff. Always. Houses, cars, land. Some of, some of us even have money we can pass down to our children. <laughs> and remember, I, say, I said some. Some of us. <laughs> but some of us can pass down good names, bad names, huh? Blessings, even curses. We pass that down too. We're always passing down stuff. Some of the women have babies and they keep them baby dresses for how many years? Oh, I'm going to pass this down to my daughter's baby girl. Always passing something down. We love to do that. And stuff, is, there's nothing wrong with it. But the question is, are you passing down the most important thing? Your relationship with the Lord. The time you spend in prayer. The time you stand and pray with your children. The time you call them in so you can start praying. And when they get grown and they want to stay out all night, as soon as you hear the door open, get out that bed, fall on your knees and start praying loud. And call their names out so as soon as they walk in, they can hear you praying for them. Don't let that sleep overtake you. But if they hear you praying for them, oh, it'll catch up with them. So you don't have to worry about that. Your prayers will not go in vain. God said, a fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So don't be arguing with those children. Pray with them. Pray for them. Anoint them when they sleep and pray. Break every yoke. Break it. Go in your house and anoint everything. The windows, the doors, the knob, everything. The refrigerator. They love the refrigerator. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> anoint everything and as you anoint everything oh man don't you know something's going to happen if you believe but you got to believe you just can't stand still and say oh I don't know what I'm going to do about him <laughs> I don't either if you're not praying for him Whatever you desire, you pray. You pray. Prayer is powerful. A powerful weapon that most Christians don't even use. Because you pray a big prayer today. Next two days, you don't pray at all. Remember, you're in hot pursuit, and you don't give up. You keep going. Keep on going. <laughs> but I know that in, um, God sent his son because he loved us so much to see what kind of, that we, to get us out the dilemma. Remember when Adam and Eve, they sinned and broke fellowship with God, and God had a plan all the time. And he said, look, I'm going to send my son. I'm going to bring him back to me. So God saw what we was in, so um, he sent Christ to rescue us. And God, knowing all things, he knew exactly what his son was going to have to go through for us. And that was a dilemma, but he sent him for us. Romans 5 and 8 says, for God commended his love toward us even that we were yet sinners five and eight Romans can you imagine that because I can look at some people sometimes I say I don't see it but his thoughts what well, are higher than ours his ways is higher than ours so he sent his son where well, if I looked at it, I said uh-uh I don't think so, because that person is terrible. 
But God, thank God that there is a God and that he is love. He is love. We know that when we love somebody, sometimes we have stipulations we want to set. Yeah. Because we say we love you, but if things don't seem to be going right, then you say, I don't know if that person <laughs> deserved my love or not. <laughs> They're trying to take advantage of me. But let me tell you something. Thank God that there's God. Why? Because he loves in spite of. And there is no stipulations when it comes to him. He wants all to be saved and none to be lost. How about we should have that same thing within us? Because the Spirit of God lives within us. So we should feel the same way. We should have compassion to pass on. We should have the understanding to pass on. Moral standards, pass it on. That's what we need. That's what we need. We need to learn how to love in spite of, regardless to. You know, in every race, there's a winner. One lose and one win. I'm so glad that if we stay connected with the Lord, that we win. In the name of Jesus, we win. In the name of Jesus, we win. In the name of Jesus, we win. We definitely win. There's no ifs, ands, buts, or maybes about it. We win. In the name of Jesus. Whatever concerns you, God said he will perfect that thing. We win. Why? Because he loves us. Paul's goal, he was telling his, um, the people that he wrote to in Philippi, he says that, my goal is to know Christ. The basketball team want to make that goal in the stadium. But Paul's goal was spiritual. He didn't care anything about the basketball goal. But his spiritual goal was to follow Christ, to seek after him, to pursue him. Paul said, I'm going to run this race, and I'm going to win. Can you say that? I'm going to win. Jesus' instructions told us to go. Matthew 16 and 15, he told us to go also. In, uh, I mean, Mark 16 and 15, and also in um, Matthew 28. He always tells us to go, to stay on the move. He didn't tell us to stand still. He said, move, go. You know why? Because he's soon to come. Paul said, I'm going. I'm going to keep on running. I ask you to just catch the fire. Stir up that gift that is within you. And keep on running. Keep on running. I want you to remember that when you're on God's team, there are no losers, only winners. There is no losers. Just remember that. Whatever you do for the Lord, whatever you do for your children, your church, or neighbors, or strangers, in the name of the Lord, you will never lose. You are a winner. Ah, we have the victory.
Let your hearts and your minds stay upon him. Let your love for each other, let him see that love that you have for each other. And that kind of love is seen, is felt. Let them see, let the whole world see how much in love you are with the Lord by expressing your love to others, by pressing it, by pushing it, push it out, and rejoice in the Lord because we are winners. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. As it was stated, uh, just, to, just to pass it on. Just pass it on. God's love.
Hallelujah. Can I? You got time? Yeah, go ahead. Man, we've heard.